on this episode, we are doing the thing. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the thing. We did the thing. <laughs> you may not like it, but... This is what peak performance looks like. <laughs> in some ways... The real tutorial begins now. Hmm. Hi everybody, this is Christian from Lazy Devs Academy. Welcome to the advanced shmup tutorial. We just completed a big journey. We just completed our first external editor. Today, it's gonna to be a bit of an episode of kind of um, clean up stuff. There is some stuff that uh, accumulated over, over the last weeks that I wanna kind of wrap up a little bit. And then finally, at the end, we are gonna talk about Great Wall of Schmups, indeed. But first, I want you to—I wanted to show how the editor works for those people who skipped those episodes about the editor, who didn't want to um, uh, learn about the editor, and also just like for us, for the for the rest of us, just to test if the editor is actually working. We haven't tested that really, um, which uh, we will come back to the editor for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna open up our cow map and what better way, what better way is there to test the editor than to just simply, simply add a new sprite. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna drag and drop, uh, and again, as always, the file is gonna be available for, uh, for you in doobly-doo. Oh, that didn't work so well. I'm gonna have to select this thing here. Bloop. Okay, so this is kind of like a big UFO, and again, this is like a temporary sprite, right? Uh, because this is uh, very much inspired by an enemy from GGLS3. Uh, this is not my own original creation. I mean, I did major changes to that, so it's not like completely copied, but also I don't feel comfortable using this in my, in my game. I just don't feel entirely comfortable using this in my game. Um, uh, I want to position this bad boy a little better, something like this. I'm, I want to I want to make it touch the bottom here. That's good. Okay, so this guy is something that we're gonna we want to get this sprite in our sprite system. Remember sprite system. Um, this thing is our sprite system now. It's like an external file. So let's say let's try that. We're gonna save this. We're gonna load a sprite dit. We're gonna run sprite it. Now a whole bunch of sprites, and again, uh, if you downloaded the advanced sprite dit, which I made available for the Donut Plus supporters, then you might be able to rename the individual sprites, so we cannot do that right now. But that's fine. Let's create a new sprite. We're gonna get in there. Um, now we need to hmm, see, we, hmm, immediately we see a bit of an issue here that we don't really have a good way to position the sprite is we're gonna have to do, do some guessing. Uh, we should have maybe like found out <laughs> the X and Y position at which the sprite begins. Actually, no, I'm gonna actually look up what the position of the of the of the sprite is. So here is the sprite, right? Um, I always pick up the wrong editor. So this is gonna be the center of the sprite, right? This and this, yes, yes. So the center of the sprite is 114, or the top left corner of the sprite is 114 and 45. Um, 114, 35. The width is gonna be uh, 16, I don't know, and the height is gonna be also 16. 45, yeah, 45 was, was wrong, was the right one. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, okay. Let's find out the right height. This seems to be the right height. What about the right width? 15, 14, 12. 12 is wrong. It's a bit of a guesswork. Uh, yeah. 15 is wrong, 14 is okay. Okay, uh, we're gonna uh, apply an effect, which is gonna be uh, one, nope, it's gonna be two, oh, sweet. And then we're gonna add some Gonna center the, the sprite, and again, this is a bit of a guesswork, right? It's a bit of a guesswork, and we might actually invest some time later on to make this process a bit more streamlined. But also, I'm just like not too worried about that too much. It seems fine. 
Yeah, this seems to be this seems to be good for me. This seems to be like fairly centered. All right, so let us now export. And voila. Okay, I'm gonna load cow shmup. Um, just just to test it out. Just to test it out. Here, a draw function at the very end. We're gonna do like a, a MSPR. Uh, was it 2764? 64. Let's try that. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the thing. We did the thing. <laughs> nice. So the next step um, that I want to go through is I want to just um, go with through some can some 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 leftovers, some things that I noticed in the, in the meantime. Um, one thing I talked about um, before we did the editor is that there is some stuff about the splash that doesn't quite work. And um, I did the splash before, uh, and I wasn't quite able to replicate the effect perfectly in, in this version of the, of the game. Um, and I did some analysis, and some people also helped me out a little bit to kind of like nail down what the problem is. The splash effect when the bullets hit the, hit the enemy are a bit flickery. And I was trying to find out exactly what the problem is. So first of all, let us set up a system where um, where we have like like a situation where we have an enemy where we can shoot at that enemy, and um, and see the flicker. So we're gonna go to the gameplay when we're spawning the enemies. Uh, we're gonna spawn the enemy. Uh, let us get this one out. Um, we're gonna spawn it kind of like in the center of the screen. Um, because just, I want to see the enemy. I just want to see it. I just want to see it. 24. Um, and I'm going to give it a brain of 2 so it doesn't move. Um, we don't need that bullet. Uh, we can comment this out. Uh, I'm going to do a spawn end at the beginning. Here. And in the update function, where is where is where do are we spawning the spawn? And yeah, we're not gonna spawn this like this. Okay, here's our enemy, and we'll, okay, let me give the enemy like infinite health. Uh, that's something like this. Okay, so you see the the if you watch it at 60 frames per second, especially, you can see that the splash is a little bit flickery, a little bit flickery. And I already shown you a video. There's like three things. There's three things that contribute to the flickering stuff, or um, three things you can do to kind of reduce that kind of flicker. One is that um, the problem is here a little bit that um, it's it's kind of weird that the um, uh, uh, bullet disappears before it hits the enemy. Like it. It flies towards the enemy, and then on the frame where it overlaps the enemy, the bullet actually disappears, and then instead the the splash appears, and that's kind of weird. Um, so we actually what we want to do is we want to draw the bullet. We want to still draw the bullet on the frame that the bullet collides with the enemy, so we can see the bullets kind of like flying into the enemy. Like if if the bullet disappears before it actually collided with it, before you saw it overlapping with the enemy, it kind of like looks a bit odd. Um, so that's one effect. Effect number two is that, of course, when, the, when we show the bullet overlapping the enemy on, in the frame of the collision, that's not where we want to show the splash. We want to also delay the splash by one frame. So that's the second thing. And the third thing that is kind of like odd is that we actually are firing, we change the firing frequency by in the in the course of, of writing um right changing like rewriting the, the shooting code, we actually rewrote the code in a way that it shoots one frame slower. So uh, we thought if we were shooting every third frame, but we're shooting every fourth frame or something like this. Let let me address the last one first. And this is something that the gecko uh, um, pointed out. Thank you so much, the gecko. I wouldn't have caught this myself um, otherwise. So let me inc um, look where we're doing this. So it's here where we're shooting, right? Um, here's where we're shooting. Shoot. Uh, let me find shoot. There we go. See, the problem is here. Shot weight equals three, right? Um, so we wait for three frames. Like we, we, when we shoot, we should set the shot weight on to three. Then shot weight next frame, shot weight is three. It will get reduced to two. Then it gets next frame. It gets it goes from two to one. On next frame, it goes from from 
one to zero, but it's you then cannot shoot. So you kind of like wait an additional frame there um, because it, it, there is like an else statement. If, uh, before we had like an end, and then there was second um, second if statement basically uh, checking the shooting. So it's it kind of like feels like as if we are shooting at the wrong frequency. And the fix is the short fix is to set this to to true. Yeah, you can see that the shots are way closer together. Now we really have like the stream of shots. So that's the actually the thing that we had in our first project in the move project. That's the kind of shooting frequency that we had there. And ever since we rewrote the code of how shooting works, um, the shooting frequency kind of like was reduced by one frame and the shots were slightly further apart. And when they were shots were hitting the enemy at this lower frequency, the animation um, was spaced further apart and that's why you get, got a bit of a flicker because there's one frame in between there that didn't have to like this kind of like bright center there. So this looks better, but you can see again, you can see that the shots are kind of like stopping before the enemy, right? They're kind of like stopping before they approach the enemy and then you get the splash, which kind of like looks odd. It feels like they should be fly into the enemy and then you get the splash. So we want to fix that as well. Right, so I uh, mean, this is going to be a bit of a difficult thing because we kind of, um, hmm, we kind of want to, we kind of want to draw the shots, but we don't want them to collide anymore, right? We have, for one frame, we want to have a shot that doesn't quite collide. So this is a bit of odd. Of odd. It's going to be a bit of a hack, I think. Uh, maybe we, later on we're going to find a better solution here, but let me try just something like this. So here's where the shots collide with an enemy, and I'm not going to delete the shot at this point. I'm not, not going to delete the shot. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go um, s dot del me delete me. I'm going to set that to true. So I'm going to set a flag that will say this shot is supposed to get deleted now, but I'm not going to delete it just yet. And then here in draw function, when we're drawing the, all of the shots. Um, there we go. Here we're drawing all of the shots. We're going to draw the shot and we're going to go if um, this the shot is supposed to be deleted, then delete uh, shots s. So we're going to delete them after we draw them. And in, uh, in order to make sure that we're not going to get any, any shenanigans is that um, we're going to make sure that we only do the collision if the shots are actually not supposed to be deleted. So um, yeah, we're gonna do like in this if statement, we're gonna go if s, uh, if not, and. Um, so if this shot is not supposed to be deleted yet and the collision is happening, then um, then we're gonna actually go through the collision. So the shots that are slated for being deleted, so those don't get, um, don't collide with anything else. Let's try that. So now you see the shots are kind of like flying more into the enemy. This feels better. This looks a lot better now. Um, but you might not, there's still not quite, it's still, I still want to delay the splash effect by one frame. Uh, and the way to do this is, um, I, I was thinking about how to do this the best. Um, I think for now, something that we might do is something like, um, we're gonna draw, we're gonna put, uh, like add an additional frame to this before, okay, so just to like clarify, before we repeated this first frame twice to kind of like counteract the flashing, but it didn't quite work. What I want to do now is instead of repeating the first frame twice, the 23 frame, I'm gonna set the first frame to zero. So we're not, we're gonna set our system up so when um, we're drawing frame or sprite number zero, then we're not gonna draw any sprite. Let's see if this works. Now this doesn't work obviously because our, the way our system works is it can't handle um, drawing the sprite number zero, uh, but we're gonna do like simple if statement here. If si equals zero, then return it. Um, something like this. And now, and now it looks good. This is what I what this is the kind of look I was going for. Uh, now the the um, the splash don't don't look as doesn't look as flicker anymore. You can see the the bullets actually disappear into the enemy. This is what peak performance looks like. <laughs> 
all of this was a little bit of a hack, but don't worry, we're gonna go through all of the systems over again and that, that will give us an opportunity to clean up some of this stuff. Okay, moving on. Uh, something I noticed is that we can actually uh, get rid of one of the animations, funny enough. Um, we have this animation here, ship R, that's the array of the ship. One, two, three, four, five, right? Um, we don't need that technically anymore, right? We, we kind of don't need that. Right, because we, we, we do the, like this kind of like weird math to, because like in this array, the, the index is also the value. Like this is num entry number one, this is entry number two, this is entry number three. So it's like, it's, you just can, you can just like remove this. It's fine. You can just remove this, the ship error array. We can, and we can just dump because the f first four, five, frames in our, our uh, sprite array are the ship arrays anyway. So, so why not just like something like this? And it still works fine. It still works fine. Now, a lot of people were kind of, um, um, who didn't like, didn't like the shenanigans with, with camera and so forth and X scroll. And yeah, yeah, there's probably uh, some ways of, of making this a little better. I noticed one thing that you can, um, save two tokens here by remo removing the zero zero. Like if you call camera without any kind of um, any kind of uh, parameters, it should reset the camera uh, anyway. So we can uh, get rid of the zero zero here. Um, that's four four tokens saved, and it looks a bit more cleaner. Now I noticed also something. There is a p call p call. Um, What's, what's P call? I think this was like a debug for collision stuff. So I think we don't need that anymore. We don't need that and we can remove, this is some debugging stuff. We can remove this. Yeah, this is just like uh, debugging stuff. Yeah, and it still works fine. It, it doesn't matter. And then another thing that we also had is um, is call. Uh, I think this was a thing that we had in, in the enemies. Right, the is call, but now we're using the flash, so we don't need the is call anymore. We can remove that is call. This was all debugging stuff. These are collision rectangles, yeah, yeah. Just that, making sure that is call. Just to clarify, so um, control F starts in the search thing, and so you can search, but it searches only in this uh, tab. If you want to search in all of the tabs, you go control uh, H, but we, it doesn't find anything. Then um, control G will continue the search in this tab. So it doesn't find anything in this tab and doesn't find anything in all of the tabs. Nice. Now, Whale Al um, had some, had a cool suggestion for, where was it? Where was it? It was here in the tools in a my SPR thing. So there's a function called unpack. And it's a, it's a kind of like interesting function. Let me show you. Right, so what the unpack function does is it takes a table and uh, it returns, like, like, for example, it takes this table and it returns all of the elements of that table, all of the elements of that array, um, comma separated. Uh, and you can dump those comma separated elements in an array, for example, into a function. So in this case, you have like all of the parameters of a print function in a, in a, in an array, and then with the unpack function, you can dump them uh, into individual parameter slots of the print function. And there's some other fun things that you can do with the with unpack function. Basically, every time you have multiple variables that you comma separate, um, you can um, put an array with unpack, you can put an array in there in those little slots, comma separated slots. And we can use this for our MSPR function. You know, you notice how we are repeating this um, ms square brackets two, and every time we do this, that's three tokens, right? That's a lot of tokens, and we just repeat this quite a lot, right? There's <laughs> quite a lot of repetition of this stuff. We could instead, something we, do, we can do instead is we can do uh, we can do some helper variables, something like x. Let's go sx. No, we already have sx. Um, let's go underscore x. I, I, I want to, I just don't, don't, like, don't like to use S, X and Y because uh, yeah. X, Y um, with height um, 
O X, uh, uh, offset X, yes, offset Y, um, then F X, so the effect, and then the N X, the next thing. So the whole bunch of comma separated um, uh, variables. And you remember, we, you can do the assignment like this. You can do A, B, C equals one, two, three. So A will be one, B will be two, and three will be uh, C will be three. So we can dump those variables into um, th those values into those variables, right? Now we can take this portion and we can replace it with the unpack and put uh, like individual elements from the strings and and distribute them along those variables. We can do that, and that's totally a cool idea. So we can do equals um, unpack. Uh, ms. Uh, we can we can actually don't, yeah we can just directly unpack my sprsi in there. Then we can delete this uh, just so so we so we're clear how much uh, how much token we're saving there two three zero zero. But now we bring it back unpack this. This and now we can replace all of those those three tokens little things with our helper variables. So this will be underscore x, and it's also a more readable because we know what what variables we are dealing with, right? Um, underscore o x, underscore o y, um, with height and underscore fx. Um, this is going to be underscore fx. And then we can get all this stuff out. Or at least this stuff we can, oops, we can replace those four first entries with this. And then this one is going to be tricky. Um, so this is OX and width. And then OY. And then width. Because every time, previously, every time we had one parameter in this thing, we were you know, taking something from a from an array, and it was like three tokens, and now it's every time one token. So each one of those parameters saves us two tokens, each individual one. Um, and then here we can also do a bit of a save here. We can call this an x. Uh, call it an x, right? Yeah, an x. And if that's the case, then like this. Okay. So now we saved like 33 tokens like this. 33 tokens. Sure, this cost us, this line cost us 14 tokens, but we saved so much in return. So unless it doesn't work then. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, I see. Oh, why? There we go. This is a little spell mistake. It's fine, don't stress out, it's good. Yes, oh man, this, this looks nice. I'm I'm enjoying what's what's happening here. Good. So we kind of like optimized our our little um, MSPR function a little bit. I don't like this. Um, but we're gonna. This is a bit of a hack. But we're gonna deal with this later. Now we also had from from Hera Hera Cleum. Um, also we had an optimization for the for the uh, split to D function. Um, something you can do here is. I, I'm not sure if, if that works, but we're gonna we're gonna see if that works. So you can uh, rewrite this line to be like this. In x r. Is that better? This saves us one token. I mean, it works. 
That's good. I'm not familiar with Inext. Maybe Heraklum, if, if you're watching this, maybe you can post in the comment section and explain what, what Inext is. I've never seen this before. Uh, but yeah, it's one token. Why not? And yeah, a lot of people suggested and were talking about and were pointing out that any, every time we have a function, like for example here, we have a function that takes a single string as parameters, just as one string, as, like a quotation mark um, string as parameters, you can actually leave out the parentheses. You can just leave them out. It's, it just works. It, 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 there is no downside to this. It's just like a more compact way of writing this. And totally, that's a good idea to just like do this like this, um, because that's again, that's a whole bunch of tokens that, that you just don't need to care uh, care about. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do this real quick. Yeah, this is this is good stuff. But now it's time to take a look back at our master plan. So what is the second goal? The second goal was have some basic gameplay arrive at the Great Wall. I want to spawn an enemy. We did that. I want the enemy to move somehow. We did that. I want the enemy to shoot a bullet. Yes. Um, I want to be able to hit the enemy. Yes. I want the enemy to explode. Yes. We cannot die right now. That's something that we don't have right now. Um, then, how do we conserve sprite space was a big question and there are sub-questions. How do we compress 2D arrays? We did that. The split 2D was the, the thing. We need to create, uh, need a tool to create my sprites. We just did that. How do we deal with animations? We didn't do that. <laughs> okay, so animations and getting hit by a bullet are things that are, are left, still left in the second goal. But we did the major work on the second goal, so we're basically we're arriving at the Great Wall. So these things is, are things I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry over into our third goal. The third goal is the thing I wanna talk about, and you know, I wanna make sure that we carry these things over. We're gonna carry these things over. How do we how do we indicate? We're gonna do this like this. We're gonna do the bullet 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 journal style. Like this. So we want to carry these things over. We're going to carry these things over. Great wall of maps. And then also what I want to do is I want to copy out this, this, this takeaways that we had here, these takeaways. Uh, I want to copy the. I'm just going to cut them out actually. I'm going to paste them in here. I'm going to save this. And then here to do, um, we did all of this stuff. Uh, and these are the goals. We did all this stuff. Okay, I'm going to save this and we're going to deal and we're going to talk about the Great Wall of Schmups. What is the Great Wall of Schmups? I, it's something, a term I coined. Um, I'm, it's kind of like a moment in the development of a shmup where suddenly it's no longer uh, uh, possible to just go from one, you know, fixing one thing to another. Suddenly there's a whole bunch of things that you have to do at the same time in order to progress, in order to make the next step. We created a system, or, uh, we created an enemy. We're spawning one enemy on the screen and this enemy is moving around. But the work that we did in order to achieve that is not sufficient to sustain the next step, which next step is you know creating a whole bunch of enemies that are spawning at you know at certain schedule and so forth, and whole whole bunch of different behaviors. All this stuff is not really possible with the systems that we established to spawn a single enemy, right? So we kind of have to create systems that are capable of supporting more complex gameplay, more elaborate shmup. And the problem is that those systems are kind of like wicked because of two reasons. Reason number one is those systems are kind of dependent on each other. We're gonna see this in a second, but it's kind of like, you cannot make one system without the other systems also existing. You cannot like, it, you cannot work on one system and test it and without the other system existing, they kind of like support each other. They kind of like pillars. And we establish our gameplay on top of those pillars. And we cannot work on the gameplay without all of the pillars being in place. Or like an arch, I guess. Like you kind of have to build the arch and support it as you put in the capstone. <laughs> Something like this. You know, pick your analogy there. 
And the second problem with this, with the wall of, big wall of shmups, is that we um, we have this special problem. We have this special problem where we are. Um, it's kind of like we're inventing Legos. And I don't mean we're building a Lego set. I mean we're inventing inventing the actual Lego bricks. We're inventing a system that will later on allow us to build a model, like a thing, like a thing out of Legos, right? So we're inventing the actual Lego bricks. We're deciding how you know what shape and, and size they are they are. But we have to do this before we actually know what we're trying to build. We have a vague idea of what we're trying to build. Um, and the, we're already building the, build, the system that will then later on in the second step will allow us to build that thing, but we don't quite know. And of course, our instincts there is going to be to make, you know, the, the bricks as flexible as possible, as small as possible, so we can make, you know, the very detailed things. But, uh, you know, flexible systems, flexible systems that can deal with any kind of problem are notoriously difficult to work with because you have to, you know, put in a lot of effort. Building Legos out of tiny little pieces is a huge chore. So it's kind of nice when you have like big chunky pieces that you can slap on and you're done, right? So, <laughs> yeah, so we have to kind of like find out what our Legos are going to be, what our system is going to be before we have the game in place. All right, so let us identify the systems that we need to work on. I'm gonna uh, do like a small things. Um, player dice if they get hit by a bullet. Um, we need an animation system. Absolutely need that. So this is how do the question of how we're going to do this deal with animation. This is we're going to need an animation system. Um, X scroll is a big pain in the uh, in the butt. Um, yes, that's true. I'm gonna put it in the small things. I'm not sure if we can actually do anything there, but it's definitely a take away. Uh, enemy scrolling in sync with BG. Uh, yes, that's something that we uh, need to be cognizant of, but not necessarily something that we can have can do right now. Enemy behavior. So we need a system for um, enemy brain system. A system to kind of like. Uh, control and and you know define enemy behavior for a lot of different in enemies so let me let me set this out here okay it's a highly sensitive system needs immediate feedback and um, uh, needs uh, needs an efficient way to define this so yeah we need to be able to define very quickly uh, and with some good previews on how to make an how to make uh, enemies behave Okay, uh, unified collision box logistics. So yes, we need a collision collision box uh, collision box collision. Let's call it collision system. Something like this. Um, maybe our ship ship needs to be an object. Maybe yes. That's a, but that is a small question. Something that we will deal with later. We need a place to store, uh, store enemy data. Yes, this is another system, indeed. So this is we need, we're gonna need like an enemy database system, where we're gonna store information about the enemies, like how much health the points they have, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> and then merge splash system. Uh, maybe update splash and draw. Yeah, maybe. Uh, let's go. Let's let's put this in here. Okay, okay. So that solves our takeaways. There is one more system missing that we don't have in our takeaways stuff, but we absolutely need. And that is gonna be a, um, we are going to need a, let's, I'm calling this schedule system. We could also call it a spawn system. Let's just call it a schedule spawn system. So we need a system that kind of like defines when and where an enemy appears at any given time. Oh wait, there's mm, there's going to be a sixth one as well. We need also a uh, mm, bullet pattern system because those all those enemy will shoot bullets. Now we could have maybe merged the brain system and the bullet pattern um, pattern system, but um, I think it's it's a good idea to keep them separate. 
Okay, so now we have six. We have six systems that we need to take care of. And again, some of the systems are kind of easier, like the enemy database systems, yeah, sure, but it's not that difficult. We're gonna see that animation system is also not that difficult, but we need to make sure that it's compatible with all of the other um, objects when you have, and we maybe should have to do some color consolidation here. So let's make every animation work the, the same consolidation. So basically I want every animated thing, like all of the like um, uh, particles and the jets and the splashes and you know, every uh, animation of the enemies, animation of the player ship, all of these things I want to operate, uh, animate them in the same way. I want the same principles be behind this. So I can have like a unified animation system that plugs into it. So I don't have to you know, specify each animation for each type of object. I can say like play animation number five. Ah, <laughs> into in on that sp uh, particle effect or on that enemy. And um, we're gonna have like a database that, that knows about all those things. Uh, enemy database system is also very clear. Now this enemy database system, we can already think about what, what kind of idea, what kind of things we're gonna store here. We're gonna store HP, we're gonna store a brain, and that links to our brain system, right? We're gonna, we're gonna have to like somehow reference the brain system here. So that's already, uh, and then we need to um, also, uh, we're gonna store an animation or a sprite. And again, that um, links to the animation system. So this is already, the animation system is already interlinked with the enemy database system. So these kind of like things we have to invent at the same time, so to speak. The collision system, I have an idea on how to solve this. We might we might be able to repurpose existing systems, so we might not need it, but we definitely, the enemy database system will probably save the a collision box. So collision box. Uh, and again, uh, the exclamation point means that there is some interlinkage happening between the systems that we need to be aware of. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking like these three are going to be something that we're going to deal with first. They're going to kind of they are kind of like lumping together. But those three are the the heavy hitters. Those three are are kind of like tricky. For example, for the schedule system, this is in many ways, in many ways, this is the creative critical critical creative payload. Our levels are critical to how well this game plays. We want to be able to easily experiment with different enemy layouts and so forth. This needs, needs a, a um, comfortable, a comfortable editor. We need good previews of enemy um, formations. This is tricky. This is tricky because it means that brain brain system link up. This means that kind of like the enemies need to already behave in our editor the way they will behave in the game. So we can see, see how they're flying on the screen. It, it, we want to like, if it's just spawn some enemies, we want to be able to see how they come down and you know, how they're arranged. Uh, in the editor, we don't want to like launch the game and then see how they look in the game. We want to see it in the editor already. And this will be heavy hitter. This is going to be a, the beating heart of, of our tool set for uh, conquering the, the, the Great Wall of Schmumps. Now the um, enemy brain system is, is a bit of a tricky, tricky. Um, we definitely gonna need an uh, enemy database hookup. Oh, by the way, I want, want to say uh, enemy database hook, hookup. This will be built on top of the enemy database. We're gonna place all the enemies from the database in our schedule spawn system. So this is already interlinked. Um, same, uh, I'm not sure if this will have a database hookup because it's just uh, dealing with the brains. It is tricky though, because we don't quite know what kind of enemy behaviors we want in our game. We're gonna to have to do, maybe do some research. Um, but yeah, this is definitely tricky, the brain system. I'm, I have an idea, this, we're gonna take a look at it later on. Also, 
also needs an editor. I'm not sure if we're going to need an editor for databases, and we probably will, but it's going to be a very simple one. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to need one for an animation system. I'm not sure if we need one for a collision system. We're going to look at that later on. <laughs> um, now, the bullet pattern system, equally tricky. Also needs an editor. Um, probably um, the brain system will be linked with the bullet system because with the enemy brain, I want to say like now fire your bullets, right? And then uh, I want to kind of understand how the bullet system works. So the enemy brain system will hook up into the bullet system. All right. So you see the, those exclamation points, all of these things are interlinked. And you know, they are interlinked both ways, but I just they didn't, didn't write it. <laughs> because like the yeah, collision box system is interlinked with any database system. So I technically I would have to do like this way around as well, but you know. So you can see like a lot of exclamation points, there's a lot of interlinked systems, and there's some crucial, some crucial editors that, uh, that we, uh, we need to create. We need to create an editor here, an editor here, an editor here. And we need to do some smart solutions here as well. A lot of things are ahead of us. A lot of things are ahead of us. And then we still have to do with the small things. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put the small things at the bottom because they are not a high priority. Small things. Now let us uh, or arrange things. I think an animation system is, is the thing that we're gonna do next. And also a collision system we're gonna do as well uh, next. We're gonna deal with these two things next. So then, we can create an enemy database system based on those because then we're gonna we will have animation figured out and collision boxes figured out so we can kind of do this and we're gonna figure out brains later once the enemy data place uh, system is in place then that will solve this hookup and we can deal with the scheduling and spawning and once the scheduling and spawning is in place, it's going to be like a preliminary one because the brain system link up is a crucial part of the schedule and spawning. So once it's kind of like kind of roughly there, we want to create the enemy brain system and the bullet pattern system as well. Although the bullet pattern system is something that we might do last. It feels like it's the least critical one. I do not want to have enemy bullets visible and necessarily in the schedule editor, right? I do want to see the, where the enemies are, but I don't necessarily need to see the bullets. Um, we're going to do the bullets last and they will somehow hook into the brain system. And then we're going to deal with the small things later on. Now, I'm not going to copy all of this stuff into our, uh, uh, into our goals file, but I will copy and paste some things in here. And I will get the small things in here because there's just some stuff that I just some notes for me. All right, all right. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is a true test of whether we can make an awesome shmup. In some ways, the real tutorial begins now. But for now, let's move on to the doggy zone. Mm -mm. Yeah, the doggy zone. Um, today, not a big doggy zone. Today is going to be just all a bit more relaxing. I want to just sit down and think about those systems, how you would create those systems, especially this, uh, the, um, the brain, enemy brain system. How do we define um, brain enemy behavior in a way that's kind of universal? That's a tricky one. And the bullet pattern system is also a tricky one. The schedule system is, is logistics, but it's not necessarily difficult to figure it out. The editor will be difficult to figure out. So also good thing to uh, think about how do we want to edit? You know, what kind of editor do you, what do you want to show in an editor that, that decides when an enemy, when and where an enemy spawns throughout the uh, level? That's kind of like a good thing to think about. And again, these things are mainly logistics, but it's also good to, you know, give them the think um, through, like how are we going to solve this? Especially the collision system, I think, is my one that is that is weighing uh, heavy on my heart. Think about these things, figure out, make some plans maybe on yourself, and then compare them to my solutions. Maybe you figure out a better solution, and then I want to hear about that. All right?
Now moving on to the end of the episodes where I always say a big thank you to all the people who are supporting me on coffee, who are supporting this show on coffee. Um, the address is coffee.com slash laserdevs. So yeah, if you want to support the show, you can go there and there is some perks associated with it. And also I didn't do shout outs in a long time. So here are the shout outs to new supporters of the show. Gordon, Alex Ramos, Joseph Lachlan, Michael White, Piranha and Troubled Karma 56. And a special shout out to Leonard Steinke with a generous donation recently. Thank you so much guys for your support. Additionally, I wanted to give a shout out or a, a, like a highlight some work that I've seen. There's some tremendous work. There's some tremendous work happening in, uh, in the Discord. There's some people working on shmups which are incredible and I'm kind of like in awe and a bit a bit scared about the beautiful things that are happening in Discord. One of the people working on incredible shmups is Louis Chatton. Check out this incredible GIF. So this is an insane, insane looking shmup. It looks beautiful. The bullets are perfect. There's some crazy bullet patterns happening and huge enemy sprites. But also this moon, this moon is incredible. Look like mm, I asked Louis how they made it and apparently it's some kind of like tweet card magic and and things being written to the sprite sheet and then saved in memory and then written back to the sprite sheet this is just insane i cannot believe pico 8 looks like this and i'm really stoked to see how this one plays out i've been following the development of this in the discord and if you want to follow the development of this kind of shmup in the discord check out the discord yes 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 so we are now at the wall next episode we are gonna begin our climb See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.